head to beautiful Fenton, Missouri for this Eastern Conference matchup between St. Louis FC and the first place Charleston Battery in the Eastern Conference. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining on this spectacular Saturday evening. Tyler Terrence joined along by Albert Munoz. And Albert, this should be a scintillating 90 minutes. St. Louis FC looking to get in the win column for the first time since June the 2nd. Charleston riding a seven match unbeaten streak, having dropped all three points since May 28th. And we're going to take a look at our featured players, starting with Charleston, number three, Forrest Lasso, big, strong center back, also a threat from set pieces. He's the ultimate two-way player, the strong center, center back, also a attacking player. He's also a set piece specialist. So he's obviously has six goals in the season. He's 6'4", 210, very present in the back. Lasso has been on absolute fire in previous games, scoring in the last one. And our Toyota player to watch for Preki's side is Octavio Guzman, who broke up a 300-minute scoring drought in the 5-1 loss to the Charlotte Independents a week ago. That brings a lot of confidence into his game this game. Uh, a lot of tenacity, this workhorse in the flank. He's an exceptional player. I've been watching him very closely throughout the season. Guzman will be playing out on the wing in today's lineup as we are going to take a look at some of our starters, beginning with the visiting Charleston Battery. And Mike Anhauser is going with a 4-4-2. However, they are going to be without the services of Romario Williams, who's out on international duty with Jamaica in the Gold Cup. So opportunities up top for Charleston. Yeah, ultimately their, their role today is to make sure that they reinforce the, the, the attackers. Cordovez and Garbanzo, very important players, key players with Michael Chang and Portillo out wide with the flank. They're going to be crossing the ball constantly to look for goals. And we're going to take a look at Preki's starting 11. The starting 11 brought to you by the Cybergs family of restaurants. And Preki going with a 4-4-2 as well. A couple of new additions, Daniel Jackson, as well as Patrick Duty. Daniel Jackson acquired in that deal, which saw Jose Angulo loaned out to OKC for the remainder of the 2017 campaign. But some familiar faces in the starting 11. Absolutely. And 4-4-2 traditional, Guzman and Valeski will link up. They're going to be the partnership that we're going to look, uh, be looking out to, uh, to watch tonight. Uh, very, very aggressive play. A lot of midfield work. Um, hopefully they, they turn into some fruition and some goals. Adam Grindos will be between the sticks for Preki this evening, along with Conrad Pleva and A.J. Cochran right in front of him, holding it down for the defense of St. Louis FC, who are looking to break up a seven-match unbeaten streak of the Charleston Battery. St. Louis looking to tack down the top dogs in the East when we come back. Live here at Toyota Stadium for this Eastern Conference matchup. St. Louis FC looking to take down the Charleston Battery. Tyler Terrence along with Albert Munoz. Thanks for joining us on this spectacular Saturday evening. And Albert, obviously Charleston at the top of the table right now, but it's a great opportunity for St. Louis without the services of Romario Williams to be able to take down this Charleston team. Preki 
a living legend in American soccer, such a great player in his day, a great coach, USL champion with Sacramento in 2014. You actually had the pleasure of playing with him and against him. Yeah, we were speaking about that in pregame. Um, Preki, obviously a long history here in US soccer, entertainer, uh, entertainer um, style of play, obviously very, very intelligent player. Um, Back to your saying in reference to, to the teams, um, Charleston obviously has a huge opportunity to continue their, their path. Uh, St. Louis will always obviously want to increase their play here. They want to show they have a chance. They obviously have an opportunity to score some goals tonight. They're at their home crowd. Uh, they have a lot of motivated players. Um, so it's going to be an entertaining match overall. St. Louis coming off of that tough 5-1 loss to the Charlotte Independents who are scorching hot at the moment, just winning their sixth game in a row later, or earlier in this day rather, and the St. Louis team, and it's just sort of human nature, and as I'm sure as when you were playing, when you're coming off a tough loss, that next game, there was always a lot of energy coming out of the gate and just a real sort of urge to get off on the right foot and start the game quickly. Yeah, even post-game, and obviously the first couple of days during the week when practice comes in, you obviously are very motivated to work for the next weekend. Um, so absolutely, this is very motivating. They're going to obviously work uh, very, very hard and diligent to make sure that they get a, a, an impact right in the beginning. Um, hopefully, they'll make a difference um, in the first few minutes for them. Well, we are underway here at Toyota Stadium. As you can see, there are today's officials for the match. Mark Kadlasik, along with Don Thibault, Derek Blankenship, and Austin Sanders will be in charge of all the decision making this evening. As right off the bat, a long throw and opportunity for Charleston. It's sent in by Portillo. And there is going to be a foul on Mark Kadlasik. It's his first chance to blow the whistle this evening. And it will be a free kick for Adam Grinwis, 25 year old keeper from Michigan in his first season with St. Louis FC. And the starting job was originally Dave Allegorix, but Adam Grimless has performed beautifully in goal and getting the start again today. He was with the Rhinos from 2015 to 2016, played for the University of Michigan from 2010 to 2014, and has really been very, very solid between the sticks for Precky and getting another opportunity against the best team in the Eastern Conference this evening. That's highly important to have an experienced goalkeeper on your side. Uh, brings a lot of experience, a lot of presence, uh, a lot of confidence, and instills it in your back line, which obviously it gets distributed through the rest of the team. And there's a tough challenge from Javier Cordovez, who's getting the start with the absence of Romario Williams. He is on international duty with Jamaica in the Gold Cup. Jamaica and Mexico right now tie the top of their respective group in the Gold Cup, as the United States actually in action right now in their own group play against Nicaragua. This time we checked, they did have a two to one lead, having missed two penalties already throughout the match, as I'm sure a number of St. Louis fans and St. Luligans will be checking their phone, checking in to see how the Yanks are doing. But we have some USL score to settle here between these two teams. And the last time they met on May the 13th, it was Charleston who came away with a 1-0 win. Forrest Lasso had the goal in the 62nd minute. He's one of our players to watch. He's such a strong center back. We talked about it during pregame, but he, he's a great two-way player. You know, it's tough to find somebody who's that strong defensively, but can also be a threat on the offensive end. I mean, in all my years of soccer, I mean, that's very rare to find. I mean, as you mentioned, Tyler, um, he is an exceptional t technical player. I mean, backline players usually are very rough. Uh, they're just defenders who want to obviously obstruct goals, but he's such a two-way player and so important. Here's an early chance as it's Cordovez. Cordovez goes to ground, and there's no call from the referee, Kadlasek, and St. Louis will be able to keep possession. Good defending from St. Louis in a tough spot. Javier Cordovez, I mean, he's so good uh, back to the goal. He holds the ball well. He typically always likes to have the ball played at his feet, so he could obviously you know, run the ball, ball, ball down drop it off to his attacking midfielder and then maybe turn on a wall pass. Opportunity to run here for St. Louis. Valeski trying to cut it back to his right foot. Octavio Guzman in on it now. And Wall sends it out wide. Good play here from St. Louis. Looking to get on the scoreboard early inside of the fifth minute mark. It's a good ball and Bierman is there for the header. But it goes out for a goal kick for Charleston. It was a good idea, it was a great ball in. But Bierman on that back post, it's tough to see, especially if you're Berman size for you to be able to get a solid header to it once it comes all the way across behind all those defenders. That's an exceptional cross. You usually see Guzman out wide, but he was tucked in and you're actually creating a play and you see the replay. Um, but overall, an exceptional cross um, and almost connecting well with the goal. I mean, obviously he just needed to launch himself a little bit higher uh, here on the header, um, uh, Berman. Tony Walls, or rather that was Ivan Markovic. Markovic. Missed a lot of the season due to injury, but St. Louis fans happy to see him back in the starting 11. 
30-year-old out of Belgrade. It'll be a throw in to St. Louis, Octavio Guzman. As we have a player down on the far side. Mike Adlisek checking in. Looks like Marini. That's not promising. I mean, early on, four minutes in, and he might have maybe turned uh, an ankle or a knee. I don't think he had any, any contact with anyone. Well, those sponsorship stanchions are relatively close to the field and I've seen that happen before I've actually seen uh, terrible injuries because of signs and then the physio for Charleston already coming on to the field to check on Dante Marini but it looks like Mark Adlisic is going to have play resume here just inside of the five minute mark For the moment, Charleston will be playing a man down. Could be a decent opportunity. You hate to say it for St. Louis to try to take advantage of it, but with Marini on the sideline, Charleston is down a man. That's devastating. I mean, you'll see the replay here, how the ball, the ball developed. We're back in action here with Guzman. Here's Merkovic. Looking for an option. Goes back over for Walls. This ball clipped in. Valeski trying to bring it down. He was hoping for Daniel Jackson. And St. Louis are going to maintain possession here. Up a man and with plenty of space to play. Nice little 1 2 here. Or rather, 1 2 3 4 from Mirkovic as well as Bierman. Now here's Guzman. Leva getting his first touch. Here's Tony Walls again. And it goes out wide again. Skylar Thomas doing a good job defending, and St. Louis will settle for a throw in. St. Louis typically likes to play out, out, out wide. They obviously have their flanks really wide open, um, looking for crosses, They're constantly looking for headers and set pieces. Guzman does well. It's back out for Bierman, but that shot over the bar. It was a great cushioned header. As it looked like it was Christian Valeski who brought it down for Bierman, but Bierman with a couple of early opportunities not able to cash in just yet. And these are the type of plays that I mentioned. You know, obviously, you have a nice long cross and you have a header heading back to the 18 yard box for someone for the second ball to come in to take a proper shot. So, this is something that's been practiced over and over during practice, I would assume. Uh, Preki likes that type of style of play with his midfielders playing out wide. St. Louis looking for their first win since June 2nd. It has certainly been an uphill climb in the summer months, but they have been right there. It's been a nil-nil draw against Rochester, one nil against Red Bulls, two, two nil against Cincinnati. Again, they felt that they should have maybe at least gotten a point out of a two-one loss against Bethlehem, and then it's all the way back to the two-nothing win against TFC, two. So this is a team that has been right there, and with Preki at the helm, you have to imagine that all the right pieces are there, but it's just a matter of gelling them together and it's finding the right players for the system, and that's part of the reason why Jose Angulo was loaned out to OKC, it's just because maybe Preki feels that he doesn't have exactly the right players that he needs to fit his system, his style of play. Well, yeah, I mean, it's very important. I mean, Preki obviously brings a lot of experience, and you have a lot of quality players in this team, and, and they're proven players, they have some experience. Uh, but it is quite frustrating you know, when you get to this part of the season, you have a couple of losses, and you haven't had that much success. So hopefully it's just a matter of time, and hopefully, obviously, they continue with it, they stick to the strategy, uh, because, it's still early on. I mean, they have plenty of time to develop. But obviously, these teams, like I said, they have such quality players that there's no reason why they're not scoring more goals. Well, this is a tough blow for Charleston and for Mike Anhauser to have to make a decision this soon. But it's Kotaro Higashi who's going to come on and replace Dante Marini. Don't even think Marini got a touch to the ball. But his day is over not even three minutes into the game. And it's Higashi to come on. The player probably thought he wasn't going to see any time, at least until the 60th or 70th minute. Those are the opportunities. Players need to be ready at all times. And unfortunately for Marini, he came in, obviously, four minutes in, and he had an injury. Hopefully it's not serious. Uh, but it didn't seem like there was any contact on that play. It seemed like he might have turned his ankle or, or even his knee. And there's our first yellow card as Heavy El Cordovez is shown the mustard here in the ninth minute. Mark Adlisek not shy about going into his pocket this early into the game, but Cordovez has gone into a couple of tackles recklessly thus far and earns himself a yellow card. 
So now an early substitution for Mike Anhauser, one of your strikers already on a yellow card, not exactly the best start. No, absolutely not. I mean, Javier needs to be very careful. He's very strong, so he's a physical player, and he can be a little reckless. So it's still too early on to obviously make these mistakes. Field, and it will stay with St. Louis. So now Mike Anhauser without Romario Williams, without Antula Guerra. And now going to be without the services of Dante Marini for the remaining 81 minutes or so. So the core offensive group for this Charleston team will not be on the pitch. Probably the only person who remains, who, the two players who remain who are consistent offensive contributors are Justin Portillo as well as Forrest Lasso. Portillo more a distributor of the football rather than a goal scorer. Portillo, I enjoy watching him. I mean, he's very dangerous on the ball. He's so creative, but he, yeah, you can't just do it by yourself. And he's gonna need his, his attackers to be present, to turn, obviously hold the ball while he gets his momentum going, while he reaches the third field. Obviously, he needs to make sure, that, obviously, that he connects well, but he is a very dangerous player. He could really make a difference. Patrick Duty on top of the free kick for St. Louis. Duty whips the ball in, trying to flick it on. It was Pleva. This one goes all the way back to Greenwich. But with that said, Albert, this is such a great opportunity for St. Louis against the best team in the Eastern Conference to get all three points. This is a Charles team that it was that is without their core attacking group. This is an awesome opportunity for Brecky's team with a couple of new additions with. Charleston obviously not at 100% to get all three points and start to right the ship here in the middle of July. Great, it's time to capitalize. I mean, they need to make, take this opportunity. Like you just mentioned, they're playing at home. Obviously, they have their home crowd, which is obviously very motivational. Um, and again, they're, they're, they're a great team. They have exceptional players. Uh, they just need to make, make it happen tonight. Now time for the Mercy Sports Medicine injury report. And Wes Sharpie. The only one to keep an eye on him. He is out with a knee injury. The outside back unavailable tonight. And as there was Garbanzo trying to spin away from the challenge, surrendered possession, but St. Louis unable to hang on to it, and it'll stay with Charleston. This is a Charleston team that doesn't play the prettiest brand of football. They're obviously very good going forward, especially when they have the likes of Romario Williams and Antulo Guerra, but this isn't a team that's going to dazzle you with possession or anything like that, so an opportunity for St. Louis maybe to just put a foot on the ball, keep the ball. I mean, that's what Precky's teams love to do at the end of the day is just, just hang on to the ball, stretch the opposition, and find space. Yeah, and that usually outweighs. I mean, once you have possessions for, for so long, you, you create opportunities, and that's usually what happens. And But Charleston, I mean, they have a, a reputation that they live up to. Obviously, they have history. I remember back in the day since A-League was around, obviously, when I was playing in 2001, 2005, in that range, Charleston Battery has always been a present and always been a threat. But yeah, absolutely, I agree with what you're saying. St. Louis definitely has an opportunity today to make a difference, and they should because, like I said, they have players that are on a hot streak, like Octavio Guzman, who can score in goals. Uh, he, he can definitely make a difference tonight. Mark Kadlicek blowing his whistle as it was offsides on that particular play, and it'll be a free kick for Adam Grinwis. Charleston again riding that seven match unbeaten streak as they have not dropped all three points since May the 28th. Coming off a 1-1 draw against Louisville, which was a spectacular match, 2-0 win against Tampa Bay, 6-1 against Toronto FC, 2-2-2 at Cincinnati, and a 1-0 win against the Richmond Kickers and this Charleston team. Again, we said it, it's not pretty, but they find a way they get results. And sometimes that's what it takes, especially in the USL, where the football may not be world class, but they're able to find results. And that's why they're atop of the Eastern Conference right now. Both teams struggling here to find a rhythm, but it's early on, still not even 15 minutes into it. To that point, Tyler, I mean, efficiency is ultimately the goal, right? I mean, if they're scoring uh, game after game, and you're saying it's not the prettiest, I mean, obviously it all depends on, on the night. Sometimes players show up, sometimes they don't, but overall they have individualities that, that help them score the goals. Um, so overall, Charleston obviously is a dangerous team. They're doing really well. Carboza for Cardoves going for goal. It's a good shot and it's a great save from Gwynwis as he just got a fingertip to it. Javier Cordoves, dangerous player. I mean, exceptional lead up here by Charleston. Uh, 
touch after touch. Obviously, he had a great wind up here with his left foot. Exceptional, exceptional uh, block by Greenwich um, on the on the goal here. Well, it was a spectacular ball through for Garbanzo, who had the presence of mind to slide it through. Now here's Portillo with a good ball in. There's Hackshaw wide open on the back post, but he can't make good on it. Poor miscommunication there from St. Louis as Precky right now having a word with the fourth official, but that was a chance squandered by Charleston. He was wide open, Hackshaw. He's going to hopefully hopefully have another chance tonight, but he might regret this one. He was wide open. He could even chest the ball. He could have trapped it, put it down on the ground, and potentially shot on goal. He had plenty of time. I think he underestimated the time he had. Daniel Jackson giving chase now, and that's something that Jackson really brings to the St. Louis team. Along with Valeski, the two provide an immense amount of pace up top, and it just forces a lot of pressure on the back line of the opposition, not allowing them to possess the ball. But Charleston doing a good job here of playing out of pressure. That's incredibly, to your point, that's incredibly important, Tyler. Attackers constantly need to be opening up, making runs. That's going to make the difference maker tonight. Mirkovic and Garbanzo get tangled up, and it is a foul called against Mirkovic, and this is a dangerous area to give Justin Portillo the ball. He has already put in a couple of goals from a dead ball this season, and now from only about 23, 24 yards away, Mike Anhauser's side has a real opportunity to put a shot on frame and maybe go up. Yeah, he's a, spe he's a uh, set piece specialist, if I might say. Justin Portillo, uh, very similar style that I've always played. I mean, very technical, very, very good shot on the goal. Uh, free kicks, I'm sure he practices time after time during the season. Um, so we have a very big threat here tonight, this shot. St. Louis setting up a six-man wall and now Skyler Thomas joining in on it, maybe to create some sort of diversion. Michael Chang on top of the ball as well, but it will be Portillo going for goal. It was a good effort, but always going wide at the right post. And Grinwis sees it goes out of play. It actually took a deflection, and it'll be a corner for Charleston, the first of the evening for either team. Dangerous free kick. I mean, I had a better shot here. Great view. Oh, but it was a deflection off the wall. So that would have been a very dangerous. He's regretting it. Look, he had his hands on his face. He knew that ball was going to hit the post and potentially go in. Another opportunity here for Charleston. It's a good ball in, and St. Louis, I'm sure, are keeping an eye on Forrest Lasso, one of our featured players for Charleston. Six goals on the season from the center back's position. And these are the types of moments that he gets forward and sort of just capitalizes on. It doesn't look like much, this corner right here, but if Lasso gets ahead to it, it can be dangerous as there's another header. It's incredible. It, like. I, it still baffles me. He has six goals in this season. It's incredible for a center back. It's another deflection off of St. Louis, and it'll be another corner for Charleston. Here you get a look at Forrest Lasso, 24-year-old out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Attended Wofford University. Portillo swings it in. It's a good ball as St. Louis gets there first. It's cleared out, but it's only as far as Chang, who just clips it back into the area. Thomas unable to keep it in play, and it'll be a goal kick for Grinwis. So in this last sequence, we had three or four set pieces in favor of Charleston. Great, great effort on the defensive line from St. Louis. They did really well to make sure that nothing went through, nothing penetrated. Um, Grinwis very, very careful, obviously very vocal. Uh, he's a very, very popular goalie here in the back. Header into space as Higashi running onto it. Higashi with some numbers joining him, trying to slip it through. It looks like it's going to fall for Cordovez. Now back out for Thomas, who takes a rip from about 35 yards out. That one blocked in front. See the weather there, 83 degrees in Fenton, Missouri. A little bit of a breeze at Toyota Stadium, but nothing to impede the players all too much of playing the ball via the aerial route. As St. Louis looking to inch up the field now. Mirkovic for the big switch for Matt Sheldon. Valeski tried to help it along. Lasso did well to bring it down. Tyler, you mentioned the weather. Obviously, you always have to you know, make emphasis off 
if it's a turf field or a grass field that you're playing on. And this pitch here, being turf, whenever the temperature goes up, obviously the, the, obviously the speed of play always slows down a little bit because the ball's gonna go quick, obviously, but it's gonna be very, very warm, very tough conditions. But if it's 80 degree weather on turf, not so bad. It, it does correlate to maybe speed, speed of play. Uh, and it's obviously uh, a little bit more, obviously, on, on the touch. Very exceptional uh, move, obviously, from every player. Uh, so just be aware of the speed of play here as it increases throughout the night. Here's Guzman. Working on Thomas. Trying to get away from former Syracuse man, but unable to. Here's a substitute, Higashi, who came in for the injured Dante Marini. I hope that the Marini injury isn't anything too serious as he exited the game right around the third minute. He wasn't subbed off until about the ninth or so when the physio claimed that he was unable to continue for the rest of the match. And Katara Higashi coming on to replace him right around the nine minute mark. And now Charleston with some space to play yet again. There's a great challenge from AJ Cochran. Generation Adidas player doing well to go to ground. Now it's sent ahead for Jackson and Valeski. Valeski is the one who claims it. A great job from Taylor Mueller. And this Charleston back line, which is just so stingy with the likes of Mueller, Thomas, Quinton Griffith, as well as Boris Lasso. Fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune in to USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XMFC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check uslsoccer.com for dates and times. Play with good distribution to find Jackson. Now a big through ball for Jackson to run onto. Jackson with great pace towards the byline. Puts it on frame, but it's saved by Cooper. Not sure whether Jackson was trying to set up one of his teammates or go for goal, but either way, Cooper had to make the save. That was a great developed play here from the back for, for St. Louis. Um, it's interesting what you mentioned. Sometimes when attackers come to a, to a point where they don't see any assistance and need develop runs, they're gonna have to make a decision. You either take a shot on frame or obviously you cut the ball back. But it seemed like he was trying to obviously be decisive and try to cut the ball into the corner of the goal. Um, but it, it, exceptional run here by St. Louis. Cordova's injured down on the ground. We'll take another look as him and Pleva get tied up, and you just see there that Cordova's sort of hitting Pleva's knee on the way down. Yeah, he's back. I mean, as, as he fell back, he fell onto his knee. Obviously inadvertent on the part of Pleva, who was just trying to go for the ball and make sure that Cordova's didn't have good position on him. But either way, Cordova's hurt, and I guess not seeking medical attention just yet. However, it will be a free kick for Charleston. Mike Anhauser looks on. She played for the Charleston Battery for five years. Took over as the head coach in 2005, his 12th year with the Battery and their 25th season of existence. Such a great franchise with so much history and they're really honoring that badge and having a spectacular start to the 2017 campaign in first place, clear by about five points. receives medical attention. Justin Portillo on top of the free kick. It's a good ball in. It's helped out of bounds by Pleva, but it will be another corner for Charleston as they continue to rack up the set piece numbers and it's more and more opportunities for the likes of Mueller, Lasso, and Skyler Thomas to get forward. Yeah, St. Louis needs to be very careful on these plays. Obviously, as you know, Lasso's coming up. Justin Portillo is great on set pieces. Uh, it's just, just clear danger for St. Louis. But in their defense, obviously, they've held possession really well in the last uh, 20 minutes. Uh, 50, roughly 60 to 40 in, in, in favor of St. Louis, which shows that their home crowd obviously is motivating them. They're holding the ball well. They're creating chances, um, which is obviously um, to Preki's liking. Sheldon with a big throw in, trying to find Daniel Jackson. Looks like it might have gone out of bounds beforehand, but either way, it will be a throw in. Sheldon. Goes out wide. 
finding re recent acquisition, Patrick Duty. I like Tony Walls. I've seen him play before. He's very, very controlling in the midfield. He holds well possession. He knows how to read the game. He has great vision. And he's also a very strong defensive player. Check that it was actually Duty on this side. So Matt Sheldon is the right outside back. Still have to get used to number 33 in his St. Louis uniform. German trying to help it along. Cordova is trying to bring it down. Merkovic did well. Good composure, however, from the St. Louis back line to maintain possession. And to reiterate, reiterate on that, I mean, they've done really well today on their possession game. They're playing with confidence. And the other players are, are linking up well. I mean, you have Octavio Guzman on the far right, but players like Walls and Merkovic to the center of the park, uh, they're, they're key to this game. Leva striding forward. Nobody on Charleston stepping to him just yet. And here's Matt Sheldon. Good ball into Valeski. Trying to hang on to it, but Charleston swarm him, not allowing number nine to get any breathing room. Cochran giving Leva some trouble. Has to go all the way back to Grinwis. Like you said, Albert, the turf and the fact that it's hot out, ball skipping around a little bit more. Yeah, it definitely takes a toll on your feet, obviously, and your fatigue. 60, 70 minute uh, running on turf is a little different on grass. But again, if they possess the ball the, the way they're doing this, St. Louis should be, should be doing well. Um, lots of touches, lots of plays. They're developing well with their touches here. Here's Valeski, now wide for duty. Daniel Jackson playing a nice little one-two. Still Jackson, back for Tony Walls. Merkovic trying to find Guzman. Agashi breaks it up. Sheldon trying to keep it in play and maybe put it into the area. He does well. However, it doesn't get past Forrest Lasso. And it will be a throw in for St. Louis. First corner kick here for St. Louis. Cochran and Pleva forward. Let's see if the big man can cash in. Might be looking for Valeski on the second ball. Guzman whips it in. Cochran gets up for it. It's loose on the line. It's cleared away for the moment. Back out to Guzman. an extremely dangerous corner kick here. Great set piece here for St. Louis. Just short of a goal. It was Charleston's defensive line here between Mueller and Lazo who was able to clear that ball out. It will be a throw in on the sideline for Charleston. Kavlasek had a brief talking to with one of the St. Louis defenders on that last challenge as we enter the 28th minute now. St. Louis looking to take advantage of this depleted Charleston roster. There's a nice touch into space from Cordovez. Still Cordovez trying to slide it across, but Cochran with great positioning and has the presence of mind to keep the ball as well. And despite their struggles offensively and their ability to try and get all three points over the past few weeks, there has been one steady positive for this St. Louis team, and that has been A.J. Cochran. 23-year-old St. Louis native. Played for the US U18, U20, and U23 teams. Generation Adidas, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year at University of Wisconsin. Such a solid defender for Precky. Now here's Chang into the area. Chang still on it, going for the curler. Oh, and it's just over the bar. Michael Chang with a great opportunity. Grinwis was completely stretched as he saw the ball just go over the crossbar. First few touches that Michael Chang has in the game. 
great touch, obviously great set, set play here for Charleston and just cut it in with his left to set himself up. Uh, he's looking for the second post, looking for the upper 90 angle. Uh, great attempt here by Charleston. Nearly a half an hour played. Not much to write home about just yet. Sagashi with a couple of neat moves, trying to squeeze it between the legs of Ivan Murkovic, but unable to do so. Nice one-touch ball over for recently acquired Patrick Duty. Yes, very well played here by St. Louis. They're holding the ball really well, playing almost by memory at this point, Tyler. It's very important that they're touching one, one or two touches max, opening up the field and letting the ball make, make, make the runs, basically. Duty. Clips it in, trying to find Valeski. It falls for Jackson. His first touch lets him down. Might have had an opportunity to put one on frame had he brought it down cleanly. It's a tough ball to bring down at that, however. However, it'll stay with St. Louis, who have been in clear possession for the past few minutes or so. Charleston's continuously trying to look for his uh, point man up top. Javier Cordovez always, always looking for his back to his goal, holding the ball well, as we see here. He is the man that holds it, waits for his teammates to come up, tries to hold it at least. Most of them got obviously outplayed here in the foul, but overall he's done pretty exceptional today in the first 30 minutes of this game, um, creating opportunities for his team. Cordovez fouled there, and Ivan Markovic. The culprit on that instance, as there will be another free kick for Charleston. Big bodies forward again, like some Taylor Mueller, Forrest Lasso, and Skylar Thomas all in the area and with the delivery of Justin Portillo. It's always nervy moments giving a free kick to Charleston. The thing about St. Louis is that they're a team that understands the responsibility here in these defensive plays, and so they've been training for them. So they know very well they have to be very aggressive in the air here. It's a good ball in from Portillo as Pleva gets there first. But it is going to be offside on Charleston and St. Louis can come out the other way. Justin Portillo with five goals and five assists on the season. Played at Coastal Carolina, 24-year-old and in New Orleans. Had his season last year cut short due to injury. He's making the most of his time on the pitch this season. And it's no wonder this Charleston team is atop the Eastern Conference with great delivery from Portillo and Chang alike, and then the likes of Romario Williams, as well as Guerra running onto it. However, those two not available tonight. Again, Romario Williams with Jamaica in the Gold Cup. Williams actually scoring in their win over Curacao last week. Great opportunity for Romario Williams and as well as other USL comrades, Damian Lowe and Corey Burke of the Bethlehem Steel, to yeah. be able to get opportunities with their national team. Yeah, you were mentioning that before in the last game that we called. Obviously, we have a lot of USL players exposed to international play, which is exceptional. Um, all these players they get that international experience, even if they're not getting a lot of minutes at the moment, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're, they're going on there, obviously, and getting the experience of going, obviously, in the locker room. They're going into uh, the warm-up. The, whole, the stadium, the whole experience, they come back a better player. So overall, the league obviously just constantly, constantly gets more and more exposure to the international play. This ball in the middle of the park, and Octavio Guzman commits the foul on Kataro Higashi. And Justin Portillo now claiming that St. Louis is time wasting a bit, constantly kicking the ball away after. Kamasik blows his whistle, and now Mirkovic getting a talking to about that specific occasion. That's a tough call. I mean, he got stuck. It seemed like he just ran into the player. Octavio Guzman is not typically a dirty player. He's very clean. He's just hardworking. Obviously, he's very strong. So any interruption through him, obviously, turns out most likely um, into a foul. Sheldon taken down on the far side. Skyler Thomas commits that foul. Packed house here at Toyota Stadium, one of the best atmospheres in the USL. Trying to will their team to a massive three points to get things started here in the middle of July. 
Yeah, it's been sort of a rough stretch for this St. Louis team. They only had two USL games in the month of May. It was broken up by US Open Cup play. They made a nice little run, falling to the Chicago Fire in the fourth round. At the hands of a Luis Solanac Golasso. And they sort of really didn't find the rhythm in the month of May, only two league games, and then the month of June wasn't exactly kind to them. And they're really looking to just get on the right side here. Understandably, the lack of play usually disrupts momentum. Obviously, it's frustrating for a team to obviously not have that. You said the rhythm. You have to have the rhythm week after week. Obviously, you're playing by memory most of the time at this point in your season. So you have uh, the unfortunate situation where your scheduling conflicts affect your performance. So St. Louis really has an opportunity tonight to step up and obviously make a difference here. And as you see, so far, so good. Possession 62 against 40%, basically 60-40 uh, in favor of St. Louis. Um, they need to keep it up. They need to keep uh, you know, persistence in their, in their scoring opportunities, and hopefully something comes into fruition for them. This game's starting to get a little bit chippy already, only in the 35th minute, as you saw Christian Valeski a little reckless into that last challenge. However, this ball falls extremely nicely for Garbanzo. Still Garbanzo. He's taken down. It is, a, is it a penalty? No, it is not. Mark Adlisic waving his finger at Garbanzo, telling him to get up as it looked like it was a clean challenge, and the referee said it was, and we'll play on. Ricky Garbanzo had an excellent chance here. I mean, he was dribbling uh, pretty much with only one or two defenders besides him or even behind him, but he took a little long. He was hesitant to take a shot. Uh, he ended up obviously trying to seek a, a penalty kick, but it wasn't, it wasn't going to be called. Might have made, maybe taken a shot a little earlier there. Well, you're usually not going to get the benefit of the doubt from the referee if you're off balance and if you've taken sort of one too many touches because the defender's going to come and most likely knock you off your feet just because of the fact that you're off balance and right. you're sort of in that area. As this one sent towards Valeski, trying to keep it in play, but it will be offside on the Nevada native. This is here, Ricky Garbanzo. I mean, he took a little way too long, as you, as you were expressing, Tyler, and correct. Uh, any defender that comes and tries to challenge him is most likely going to be brought to his brought to the ground just because of the momentum he has, the speed. Um, but maybe he had a better chance next time. Maybe he'll obviously take a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Cooper told to retreat a few yards by head referee Mark Adlisic. Pushing the last 10 minutes of play here in the first half. Neither team really with a glaring opportunity just yet as Pleva has to go all the way back to Grinwis. But he does well to send it the other way. Griffith up strong for the header, but another good step from Pleva as well. Duty thumps it the other way as we see some back and forth action here. If I know Preki at all in his style of play, I know very well that he's, he should be going into this halftime very emphatic on how important it is to continue the possession. I mean, because I know he, he's the type style of player that he's very creative. He was very, very skillful in his day. He always wanted to rile his team up by making sure that they held the ball well and built a style around him. So in this case, you're looking for a player like Guzman or even Voleski up top who can create those chances. So Preki is going to obviously want to emphasize this in the first half uh, at halftime uh, so they can actually keep that momentum going into the second half. Good movement here from St. Louis. Mirkovic with a nice turn. Finding duty in some space. Pierman does well to keep it for St. Louis. Now here's Bjerman. Long for Tony Walls. Over Skyler Thomas in pursuit. That's sort of the danger sometimes, Albert, of being a possession-based team. You throw so many numbers forward, you commit your outside backs, and it leaves you vulnerable to the counterattack. And that's sort of Charleston Battery's bread, you know, bread and butter is hitting the other team when they commit numbers forward, when there's only a few defenders back and use the pace of Romario Williams. You use the ability of Garrett to find people in space. Now those two aren't available tonight, but that's what Mike Anhauser's teams are going to do. And that's what St. Louis is leaving themselves exposed to. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's why it's dangerous. But at the same time, they have to expose themselves to a certain extent to make sure they create opportunities. So it's only on them to make sure they keep their possession well and obviously responsibly going forward and not obviously leaving too many holes in the back. Uh, but at Charleston's advantage, I mean, if they have that situation, they're going to obviously capitalize if they can. Uh, but hopefully, like, like you mentioned, hopefully St. Louis uh, is smart with their runs and obviously on their touches. Garbanzo taken down from behind by Pleva, and he's selling it maybe a bit more than it actually was. There will be a foul on Pleva, but I doubt that he'll go into the book for that challenge. My only concern here is with the turf field. Sometimes tackles from the back, sometimes cleats get stuck on the ground. Sometimes, obviously, there's not enough leeway for the knee to turn or the ankle. So I've seen many injuries happen because of turf field. Sometimes, unfortunately, because obviously there's too much pressure on that, on that leg. Um, so let's hope it's not that, that's not the case. I hope he's selling it um, for his obviously injury. I hope it's not a serious um, situation here. Well, Pleva actually did go into the book there. So now one of St. Louis's center backs is sitting on a yellow card, and that's always a little bit dangerous. I'm one of your main defenders ha having to be careful going into challenges and taking a second look at it. That is a little bit naughty from Conrad Pleva. Yeah, he took a good swing from the back. I mean, that was a nice hack. He had no chance. He didn't chance. He didn't have a chance to actually get the ball. I mean, he know very well Garbanzo was blocking him with his body. He just went for it. He swung and uh, swung unfortunately, and he caught him with the yellow card. So he needs to be extra careful here. Portillo with another good delivery. Good step though from the St. Louis back line. Portillo just sending it back in, playing it safe as Patrick Duty. Keeping possession for St. Louis. Bierman in tons of space. Going out wide for Sheldon. Nice weighted ball and a good touch from Sheldon. Matt Sheldon into the area looking to get around Skyler Thomas. Sheldon able to win a corner kick for the home side. Beautiful opportunity here for St. Louis. I mean, I was just going to mention before uh, this capitalized. Um, this is the type of set piece they need to create. St. Louis has a chance now in the last four minutes or so. They need to make sure that they try to get a goal on, on, on the board. Going into halftime, up 1-0 would be exceptional for them. Guzman on top of the corner yet again. It's an outswinger. Hackshaw gets there first. It's back out to Duty. Duty trying to chip it in. They're asking for a handball. They're not going to get one. Now it's Valeski going for goal, and there's the save from Cooper. However, it is going to be a handball. At least he got his good practice shot off. Valeski didn't continue. He didn't stop until he heard the referee blow the whistle, which is exceptional from a forward. Mm. Interesting, that, that, that was obviously deflected off the hands, but would a, re would a referee call that a penalty kick or even a free kick? That's going to be tough. That's going to be controversial. Well, that begs the question, what was the whistle blown for? Was it offsides on Valeski? I actually think it was a handball on Valeski. On Valeski. When he trapped the ball with his chest hand on the side. And he took that shot. Ah, after. that's right, the old chest hand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whatever works, right? <laughs> Bierman does well. Jackson leaving it off for Mirkovic, but it's a bit of a hospital ball as Chang comes all the way back and just sends it towards Pleva, and St. Louis will continue to keep possession. Sheldon driving forward. Lagashi giving chase. Sheldon bending it in. It's a good ball, and Forrest Lasso had to make sure of it. And it'll be another throw in deep in Charleston territory for St. Louis. Valeski posting up on Thomas. Here's Patrick Duty once again. Duty with a nice little fake. Around a couple defenders, it's still Duty losing his balance. It's back out to Jackson. Jackson letting it fly, but Cooper able to hang on to that nicely as it didn't necessarily have the pace to beat Odisno Cooper. I really like Jackson's initiative there to take a shot. I mean, he had the ball, he cleared it, he made his right turn, and then he whipped the shot into the goal. Like, absolutely great attempt here by St. Louis. 
Cordovez going for goal this time, and Grinwis has to parry it away. Cordovez a number of times has turned in the middle of the park and let it rip. Grinwis has been up to the task thus far. St. Louis can give him a chance. He knows very well how to turn and, and spray a ball. He's very lethal with his shooting, so very dangerous player. St. Louis just continues to be, be very dangerous to watch him. Getting word now from the fourth official that we should have one minute of stoppage time at the end of this opening 45 minutes as the St. Luligans giving Justin Portillo a hard time over in the far left corner of Toyota Stadium. Now Mark Kadlasek going to have a word with a couple of players inside of the area. So like Garbanzo in on the mix. Sixth corner of the evening for the Charleston Battery. Looking for a tally right before the half. It's another great ball in. Grinwis punches it away. Hackshaw with a neat touch to keep it for Higashi. Higashi clips it in. Thomas up for it. However, Duty clears it away. You have to give St. Louis a lot of credit while Charleston has had a number of set pieces in a dangerous area, six corners, they've done extremely well to defend them. And they're going to have to defend another one as Matt Sheldon called for the foul. And again, Ricky Garbanzo down on the ground. And Preki not exactly thrilled with the call. He's furious. He's so passionate. <laughs> He's a very emotional player. Uh, always has been. Uh, but Garbanzo has sold two, two clear free kicks here. So, I mean... They need to be very careful in his last minute of play. Uh, need to be very careful with the set piece that they let, let up. So not a good ideal team to let it go against anyways. But like you mentioned before, Tyler, they've been really well, really, really strong on their, on their defensive side. Uh, so they need to keep this up. Obviously, uh, Greenwood has done well to make sure he's been very vocal. He's obviously communicated well with his defense. So uh, hopefully this is a chance that they give up here. Now it's just a matter of whether Portillo is going to try to put it on frame or send it into an area for the likes of Thomas Mueller or Lasso to get on the end of it. Either way, it's a dangerous area. Garbanzo missed times and run. It will be Portillo. Portillo going for goal, but it's always going over the bar. And that might do it for the first half. St. Louis have weathered the set pieces storm from Charleston thus far, and they've been able to keep it nil-nil against the best team in the Eastern Conference. St. Louis fans all smiles at the moment as their team is tied with Justin Portillo and Charleston or atop of the Eastern Conference table. It's nil-nil here at Toyota Stadium. Albert, your thought in the first 45 minutes? Well, oh, those two men right now, we just saw walk out. Lazo and Portillo did exceptional well this half. But St. Louis, overall, I'd say they have the most possession. They're getting the chances. They're going to have a stellar second half, hopefully. We have yet to have a breakthrough in the opening 45 minutes. We're hoping for one in the second 45 minutes. Nil-nil at halftime from Toyota Stadium. We'll be back in a few minutes with stats, highlights, and oh so much more.
Halftime here at Toyota Stadium, St. Louis FC nil, Charleston Battery nil as we're moving through the halftime show. Halftime is brought to you by Hollywood Casino. But before we go any further, let's take a look at St. Louis FC in the community. So today we are TW Constructors, a full service general contracting minority business here in St. Louis and one of our corporate partners at St. Louis FC. After starting the firm in 2002, the owner Todd Weaver founded Mechanical Solutions and Fire Solutions to create a diversified portfolio allowing clients to control costs of scheduling projects. Recently they relocated to Maryland Heights to newly renovated office that earns a best place to work title. Let's go see why. Their new office is equipped with state-of-the-art technology and includes a basketball half-court, full gym, batting cages, and training equipment, not to mention some ping-pong, darts, and foosball. You could see the experience on display throughout the St. Louis. They provided the millwork at the Cardinals Hall of Fame and re renovated suites at Bush Stadium. They built the existing two-story worldwide technology, headquarter on Fifi, renovated their campus offices, built their state-of-the-art advanced technology center, and now in the final stages of completing the build of worldwide technology to six-story headquarter building in Westport Plaza. Let's go in and take a sneak peek. Over at TW Constructors, they are building more than state-of-the-art facilities. They are building and helping their community. After the 2015 flood, and again after the 2017 flood, they stepped up to assist in rebuilding Worldwide Technology Soccer Park, allowing St. Louis FC to get back in the game. They rehab the facilities and the fields, and their generosity doesn't stop there. They are advocates for several charities in the area, while also working with other organizations to extend opportunities to those in the community. Check out TWC.STL.com for all your building and renovating needs. So a nice look at St. Louis FC in the community as we are at nil-nil at the big intermission here at Toyota Stadium. But we'll be back in just a few moments with more from the Hollywood Casino Halftime Report. We built the USL into the largest Division II professional soccer league in the world. And now the time has come to announce USL Division III. America's professional third division league, completing the U.S. pro soccer landscape. It's time for your town, your team, your game. D3 will fuel local pride and local passion, creating a new legacy for the beautiful game and inspiring its tribal following across the country. This is professional soccer, built on a disciplined financial model and operational excellence. Featuring exciting venues to thrill fans. In hungry new markets yearning for the game. USL Division III. Professional. Passionate. Proven. Pro soccer starts here. Coming in 2019. For more information, visit USLD3.com. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. The opening half of the 2017 USL regular season has seen two teams emerge at the top of the Western Conference with Real Monarchs SLC and San Antonio FC engaged in a duel for conference supremacy and potentially the USL regular season championship. San Antonio broke out first, putting together a 14-game undefeated streak 
which included a 672-minute shutout streak to start the season. But the Monarchs' USL record nine-game winning streak, led by Sebastian Velasquez, has moved Real's new-look squad into the top spot as a showdown at Toyota Field on July 22nd closes in. The top of the Eastern Conference has also seen a clearly defined top two, including Louisville City FC, a finalist in the Eastern Conference final the past two seasons, pushing for another high finish in the standings. City's hard-driving attacking group, led by Brian Ownby, Niall McCabe, and Cameron Lancaster, has thrilled packed houses at Slugger Field so far this season. But leading the pack is the Charleston Battery, whose 25th anniversary season features an attack that more than lives up to the club's cannon-bearing crest. Led by Romario Williams, the battery lead the USL in goals, with the likes of Forrest Lasso, Justin Portillo, and Atula Guerra providing a strong supporting cast at MUSC Health Stadium. Williams' success has placed him in a duel with Reno 1868 FC's Dane Kelly in the race for the USL Golden Boot. The two Jamaicans producing some highlight reel finishes on their way to double-digit goals before the end of the first half of the season. Kelly's run of scoring in six straight games helped expansion side 1868 FC up the West Conference standings. Currently well positioned to take its place in the USL Cup playoffs, Reno follows in the footsteps. The likes of FC Cincinnati in 2016, Louisville City FC in 2015, and Sacramento Republic FC in 2014 in finding immediate success on and off the field. Poised to join that group in 2018 is Nashville SC, which has already built an impressive front office and hired former MLS Cup winner Gary Smith as the first head coach in the club's USL history. With more expansion news expected in coming weeks, the conclusion of the 2017 season not only provides more on-field highlights to thrill fans, but also set the course for the USL into the next decade as it continues to raise the bar across the board. Still moving through the Hollywood Casino halftime report here at Toyota Stadium. Nil-nil between St. Louis FC in the first place, Charleston Battery. And our USL game of the week for this particular week is RGV playing host to Orange County SC at HEV Park Wednesday, July 19th, 8 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN3. Should be a great matchup between Eric Bird and Alexa Jerry Van Envyk and the rest of Orange County SC as we will have more with the Hollywood Casino Halftime Report in just a few moments. We'll have halftime stats, highlights, and second half kickoff when we come back.
Back here at Toyota Stadium for the Hollywood Casino Halftime Report. St. Louis FC and Charleston Battery deadlocked at nil-nil at the moment. Not much to write home about in the first 45 minutes as neither team could find a breakthrough as we'll take a look at some of the best moments from the opening 45 minutes. And Albert, not exactly a ton of action early on, a couple of half chances here and there. Yeah, I mean, early on, Charleston obviously, you know, really challenged uh, St. Louis's back line. They've had a lot of set pieces and a lot of opportunities, just like these, like we just saw from Portillo's cross. Um, unfortunately, for Charleston, I mean, they're not going to get these uh, chances back. It's not guaranteed in soccer. So hopefully they will be capitalizing more in the second half. Um, and St. Louis has had a couple of opportunities. They've had a lot of possession game um, in their favor, uh, which ultimately, you know, concedes a lot of opportunities on goal against Charleston. Um, it's been an exciting match so far. They've had a lot, a lot of turnovers, obviously a lot of opportunities, a lot of different chances that have been created, as you see here from St. Louis. Uh, Octavio Guzman with the crosses. Um, and Charleston has overall been very dangerous uh, with this man here. Um, always call, always create, creating danger, making sure that he's always looking for, for types on goals. Mr. Garbanzo, uh, he's had several impacted uh, moments here, uh, creating fouls, always creating chances, maybe yielding some penalty kicks. Uh, but overall, uh, none of the shots have, been, have come out into fruition. See Garbanzo there going down, not getting the call from head referee Mark Hadlasek. And there's a yellow card on Conrad Pleva as Garbanzo goes down hard yet again. Pleva on a yellow card as well as a couple of players on Charleston. Garbanzo was hit twice uh, severely from the back um, on both these plays here. And then there would be one more opportunity right before the half as Grinwis would have to make another save on Cordovas, who was certainly active in the first 45 minutes playing instead of Romario Williams as we take a look at some of the stats brought to you by Hollywood Casino. And you can see here that St. Louis just utterly dominating the possession category, but Charleston with a few more shots. St. Louis one more shot on target. Anything surprise you here? Uh, no, I mean, St. Louis, we've been definitely uh, touting their, their possession game the first half. Preki must be exceptionally high on them for now. Uh, they just want to have some kind of goals and maybe potentially get some capitalization on goals uh, in the second half. Uh, but no, nothing surprising. Uh, shots are there, creativity is there. Um, the work ethic is all there for both teams. Uh, but ultimately, the second half will be very decisive for this game. And we'll take a look now at the upcoming schedule for the Beasts of the East. The Charleston Battery and Mike Anhauser's team have a couple of extremely tough challenges coming up in the coming week at the Tampa Bay Rowdies and then at the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Highmark, an extremely tough place to play as well as Outlang Stadium. So it'll be two very difficult tests for the Battery. And on the other side for Preki's team, St. Louis FC home against Louisville City. All these times are Eastern time here, 8.30. And then at 7 o'clock against the Richmond Kickers in Richmond, Virginia on July 29th. And they have a couple of home games on August 5th and as well as August 13th against the Rowdies in the middle of August. And now we'll take a look at some of the standings. Albert Munoz, other than our obviously top two teams right now, our, our top two teams have actually shifted. Charlotte Independents, who just a few weeks ago were probably outside of the playoff picture, now in second place behind the Charleston Battery, also with a game at hand. Very entertaining teams to watch as well. I mean, Charleston's doing exceptionally well. They're, on, they're poised, obviously, to finish first in, in, in their um, Eastern Conference here. So um, both teams are challenging for that number one spot, but every game counts at this point. They're midway past the season. Um, so, like I said, every point is going to count for these players. And we'll take a quick look at the Western Conference here as it really has been the story of two teams, and that's San Antonio and Real Amarnox. SLC as though two teams have just been absolutely on fire for the first half of the season. Yeah, the entertaining players uh, and teams to watch as well. Real Monarchs, I've seen them several times, and I told you a lot of attacking force, a lot of the creativity in these teams. Well, the fans here at St. Louis are still waiting for something to cheer about in terms of maybe a goal scored, as we have yet to see a breakthrough from either team, Charleston and St. Louis, still looking to break the seal here in the second 45 minutes. St. Louis looking to get their first win since June the 2nd. Charleston looking to keep a seven match unbeaten streak alive as we are underway for the start of the second half here at Toyota Stadium. A couple of half chances here and there for both teams. Tyler Terrence along with Abra Munoz as we begin the second half of this hard fought contest as Daniel Jackson immediately winning a deep throw in for St. Louis FC and Albert 
if you're Precky, is there anything you're saying that's vitally important to your boys in the locker room at halftime? Absolutely. You want to make sure that momentum is kept. Your own possession, obviously, is very important for them to actually continue so they can continue creating chances. That's the only way. If you hold the ball well and long enough, you're obviously going to tire out your, your opponent. Uh, just make sure you capitalize on your opportunities. Don't let anything go to waste. Um, and usually second half starts, usually, obviously, as you see, the weather, the sun, everything's set already. Everyone, obviously, is, is in rhythm. So it's usually the best time entertainment-wise for these players to come in. They're loose, and they're going to obviously you know, put on a show for the second half. And Preki now going to get a stern talking to from head referee Mark Kadlicic, as he wasn't exactly happy with the no call from Skylar Thomas on Octavio Guzman. And Skylar Thomas also joining in on the conversation. You rarely see that. And Preki, as you mentioned earlier, Albert, always an animated character on the sideline and not afraid to show his opinion to the head referee as well as the fourth official. And you sometimes feel bad for the fourth official because he obviously doesn't have anything to do with what's going on on the field. He's just mainly in charge of substitutions as well as at a time. But he usually gets the worst end of Preki's wrath as we continue here. I'm incredibly happy that's not my job. Let's just say that, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. But it's true. But, but at the same time, Preki's attitude obviously has always been very, very positive with his uh, emotional. Here's Valeski in a foot race, trying to get on the right side of Thomas. He's taken down. It's still Valeski trying to get it on his right foot. Valeski able to hang on to it. Back for Guzman. Guzman going for goal. It's blocked by Portillo. And Thomas able to clear it away. It was great hustle from Valeski just to keep the play alive. But it comes to nothing. And it seems like Preki's, I, guess I was about to mention his, his presence, his, his obviously positivity has influenced his team because they've come out obviously full force trying to make a difference in the first few minutes of the second half. St. Louis coming out flying at the start of the second half here. Okay, the St. Louis team coming off of a tough 5-1 loss to the Charlotte Independents last week. They just won their sixth game in a row tonight. And you have And we did have a substitute at halftime, and this substitution is brought to you by G&W Meats. Tyler David replacing Ivan Mirkovic at the 45-minute mark. So David will get the whole half to try to make a contribution. Here is David getting his first touch of the evening. Tony Walls looking for an option. Goes out wide. Duty clipping it into the area, takes a deflection off the first defender. Now here's Guzman trying to bring it down. He gets a shove in the back from Hackshaw, and it is a foul, and this is a very precarious situation for Charleston, an advantageous one for St. Louis. It will be a set piece from about 20 yards away. And it was our man, man to watch for St. Louis who created this opportunity. Mr. Guzman here did what he could with the ball. He put himself in a situation. He got pushed, took it, he took the fall, and absolutely, absolutely yielded a nice free kick here. So now the question becomes who will take the honors for St. Louis. Patrick Duty standing on top of it, as well as Octavio Guzman. Guzman has the hot foot, if you will, scoring against the Charlotte Independents and breaking up a goal-scoring drought that extended almost more than 300 minutes, going back almost a month. So it'll be Duty or Guzman. I'm not sure if there's a sign free kick uh, takers here for, the, for St. Louis, but in this moment, like you just mentioned, uh, Tyler, he, he is hot. He just scored. I mean, he needs to take this free kick. He just yielded this free kick. Why not give him the chance? Big opportunity here for St. Louis. It is going to be Guzman. He puts it on frame, and it's in. No, no goal. Oh, that's extremely frustrating for St. Louis. And it's going to be a push-off. And St. Louis is absolutely livid. You will rarely see that, a free kick just straight up called off. We have to see this again. This is, oh, yeah, he got pushed. This is so rare. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Exceptional free kick, by the way. It was, bond. It was a spectacular free kick, but it'll be one of those free kicks that never were as this one is blocked in front by Sheldon Higashi doing well, and Charleston taking advantage of the fact that St. Louis were still arguing the previous call. And Preki, again, not happy with the call on the field, letting the fourth official have it. I would argue that to the, to the end as well. I mean, you never know. You never know. Maybe he, he did shove him a little bit, but at the same time, Charleston player flew going forward. He really sold that foul. So uh, that's, that's tough on, on Guzman and St. Louis. And it's tough because 
that player who was shoved was on the edge of the wall. That ball was curled over on the other side of the wall, so it really didn't have anything to do with the play at all. Exactly. This corner is sent in, and the header is actually won by Charleston. It goes out of bounds, and it will be a goal kick for St. Louis in this game was chippy in the first half and continuing that same trend here early in the second as we'll take another look at Mueller and it looks like Pleva who collided here. Yeah, they might have knocked heads on the way down. I still can't get over Guzman's free kick. Uh, what, a, what a great chance, what a great shot. I mean, as if he's been practicing, practicing this uh, week after week. Um, he's a set, set piece specialist with crosses, but I hadn't seen him take a free kick. This is incredibly tough for, for St. Louis right now. And Taylor Mueller getting to his feet, shaking that knockoff. Mueller, one of the Charleston Battery backline warriors, will most likely continue here. But an extremely controversial moment just a couple of minutes ago as Octavio Guzman's goal is waved off and Odizno Cooper had no chance. You saw him just absolutely freeze, thought it was going over the bar, and that's the perfect free kick that was where you're able to get that action to get it up and over the wall and then down in time to get it underneath the crossbar. And such a shame for Octavio Guzman, who has had the hot foot. We mentioned that he should be the one to take the free kick. It ended up being him, but waved off by the referee. And St. Luligan fans, as well as Preki felt that they are a little hard done by that call. Now that I see that David touched the ball, I mean, I, the last few games that I've seen him play, David is making such a difference when he comes off the bench. He's such a steady uh, midfielder. Uh, he's a, a presence in the center, so he's always going to have the ball at his feet, and hopefully they continue to give him the ball because he will make a difference for St. Louis today. And Kataro Higashi issued a yellow card here in the 53rd minute, so Higashi goes into the book. And another opportunity for St. Louis from the set piece. They've had a number of opportunities from dead ball situations throughout this game, as well as Charleston, as it hasn't been exactly a completely clean game. We've seen a lot of fouls and a lot of set piece opportunities. And a chance for the lefty Patrick Duty to whip this into the area. It's a two man wall for Charleston. Duty making his St. Louis debut along with Daniel Jackson. Duty. With a good ball in, trying to flick it on was David. It falls for Portillo, doesn't exactly get a full clearance to it. And it'll stay with St. Louis as they clip it right back in. Griffith with the header. Flava sends it back in. Valeski trying to make a turn, but his first touch lets him down. And Chang sends it away, able to keep possession for Charleston. Chang joining the play. And a great ball with the outside of the foot to find Higashi, but a great recovery run from Guzman. Higashi doing well. Guzman with the sliding challenge. Very difficult to outpace uh, Guzman on a, on a run. He's so strong and he's fast. And this is what St. Louis needs to do. I mean, they, they need to carry this momentum into, into proper uh, chances in their, in their final third. Um, they've been play, playing really well the second half. Uh, they've been you know, creating chances, so... Uh, Preki's always going to emphasize that they always want to be creative and they're always going to want to hold the ball. So they need to continue doing this because they have a good chance of scoring here. Guzman sends it for Daniel Jackson, who has a ton of pace. Tracking down Forrest Lasso. Valeski with great hustle. Valeski still has it. Cooper Rolf is his line. Mueller makes a great play tracking back. And Charleston can take a deep breath for the moment. Now the battery looking to operate quickly on the other end. Quinton Gritha keeping it in play. Electing for the early service, cleared away by Pleva. And Tyler David brings it down for St. Louis. So what was a relatively droning first half here at Toyota Stadium. Both teams have come out flying here in the second half. We've had a goal that's waved off. We've had a couple of hard fouls. And it looks like it's going to be box-to-box -box action as here's Daniel Jackson in some space. Jackson going towards the byline, but that's great defending from Forrest Lasso, and Cooper claims it. I was going to mention that St. Louis knows what, what, what's at stake. They need to obviously uh, hype themselves up. They need to make sure they come up as soon as possible with an opportunity to put on a goal. Um, and they unfortunately had one before. Obviously, uh, we, always knew what, we obviously knew what happened. Um, but it seems like they've really, really changed their mindset uh, from one half to the other. Uh, and now David entering the half, controlling the midfield, uh, they're looking to really continue that creative play. Big touch into space from Sheldon. 
St. Louis in one of these spells where they just become extremely patient with the soccer ball. Knocking it from side to side, looking for that space to play it into. Tony Walls, plenty of green in front of him. Sending it out wide, and it's a good ball for Guzman, who's going to be able to get there. And Guzman wisely kicks it off of Skylar Thomas, and it will be a corner for the home side. And that's why I love Guzman. He's always creating chaos. He's always working. He's, he's relentless. Uh, he will create a set piece and obviously look for a potential uh, goal here on this set piece. This corner kick brought to you by Electro Savings Credit Union. Octavio Guzman was part of the 2014 Sacramento Republic team that Precky coached that won the USL Cup final. This ball sent in, and it goes all the way towards the byline. Last touch off of St. Louis, and it will be a goal kick for Disnell Cooper. And you can tell this Charleston team is a little out of sync without the likes of Romario Williams and Atula Garrett, who wasn't even in the 18-man roster for this match, and then Dante Marini getting hurt in the third minute. And as Octavio Guzman, a nice head into space. Still Guzman has plenty of numbers in the box. Forrest Lasso gets a foot to that service and clears it away. Yeah, back to what you were saying, I mean, it definitely affects the rhythm when you have such shuffle and turnover on your team. I mean, you have players coming in and out. It's very difficult to continue uh, with the same momentum. Um, so it's St. Louis's obviously, opportunity here to, to capitalize on that situation where Preki has emphasized, let's be creative, let's obviously go forward, let's create chances. And they've definitely done this in the second half. Valeski was trying to one-touch it for Daniel Jackson, but Skylar Thomas sees that out of bounds. And it'll be another goal kick for Cooper, but St. Louis have done a good job of coming out of the locker room at halftime and putting a lot of pressure on this Charleston team. They scored a goal. They probably should have been awarded the goal, but it was waved off by Mark Kadlasek. So obviously the job isn't done because they didn't get the goal, but had they gotten it, you would have said, okay, this is the response that we needed coming out of halftime against one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. But such is life sometimes, and right now the St. Louis team with a depleted Charleston roster, needs to take the opportunity at hand. They are. I mean, they're really holding the ball well, and they're being patient, like you mentioned earlier. They're really, really holding the ball well, distributing the ball wide, and just using all their resources uh, intelligently. And like I said, they deserve a goal. They, they should be 1-0. Um, but like you said, it's, this is soccer. This is, these are the rules. Sometimes, obviously, you score some, and they take it away. Uh, so it's on them to really, you know, make their efforts uh, worthwhile and try to get another goal in there. Referee says play on. Portillo looking for the big ball over the top for Higashi. Higashi posting up on Sheldon. Hackshaw trying to chip it through for Higashi again. And Pleva is just going to see that out of bounds. And it will be a goal kick for Adam Grinwis. As we approach the hour mark here at Toyota Stadium. Thinking back to my playing games, I mean, these are the moments. It's the 60th to the 80th minute. Those are the prime minutes in the game where you're warmed up, you're obviously in a rhythm, you're hyped and you're most likely going to be at your most dangerous situation. Here's Cordova is looking dangerous, laying it off. Chang looking for an avenue. Back for Portillo, puts it on frame, but Grin was able to hang on to it. And right on cue, Albert. Charleston trying to make the most of this opportunity between the 60th and 80th minute mark. And while you obviously are fresh and you're, and you're up for the challenge, as we take another look at this save from Grinwis, fatigue also does start to come into play a little bit, no? Oh, of course. I mean, it depends on your position. I mean, if you're a striker and you've been making runs off all, all 60, 60 minutes, uh, you're gonna, it's going to take a toll on your legs. And also the midfielders, of course, and your, your flank players, you're literally working the whole game up and down. Um, but if you're reserved and you're playing well in possession and you obviously have been uh, training well and you're healthy, um, these are the moments, believe it or not, the human body allows you to play at the highest level, and you're going to be excellent and you're going to be efficient 60 70 minutes but then yes 75 80 fatigue sets in that's where you make your intelligence subs as a coach Cordova is called for the foul there 
as it'll be St. Louis free kick. Thinking about the last game we called, talking about 16 to 18 year olds. I don't think there's ever fatigue in those legs. <laughs> they could play two games straight if they wanted to. But they do have some issue winning balls in the middle of the field, so there's a little bit of trade off. <laughs> there is. And speaking of the middle of the field, uh, you're looking at a 60 40 split when it comes to possession here currently in our stats in favor of St. Louis. And, and that reflects obviously uh, Preki's uh, stealing. Um, possession in, in halftime and obviously Guzman who has the ball in the, uh, at the moment continuously increasing his efforts. Aleski with any touch sending it out wide finding duty and St. Luligan's already embracing Patrick duty letting the dudes rain down in him on the far left side at Toyota Stadium. <laughs> best support groups in the United Soccer League. It's highly motivational for, for a player. I mean, you're changing, changing your name in the sideline, that's, that's absolutely motivating. Octavio Guzman took a hard hit from Skylar Thomas, but St. Louis able to keep possession. Tony Walls with a neat touch, Neville Hackshaw committing the foul. And it will be a set piece opportunity for St. Louis once again. And Brecky immediately waving over Patrick Duty to come and take the honors on this one. Tony Walls, United Soccer League veteran. 27 years old out of Wisconsin. Such experience, Walls. Pleasure to watch. I love, I love watching him on the ball. He's very sound. USL champion with Rochester in 2015, along with Christian Valeski. Played for the Chicago Fire as well. So that one sent in. Akshaw cuts it out, makes atones for his sins. This one sent into space for Hackshaw again. Neville Hackshaw. Playing a little 1-2 game with Portillo. Good work there from Conrad Pleva. Interesting. Cut that out. Interesting play there developing by Charleston. I would, I would have thought Garbanzo being the striker that he is, he would have received that ball, set up his right foot and taken a shot. But he opted to pass the ball. And that's a little surprising on him, his end. He needs to be a little bit more selfish and greedy in the box to capitalize uh, for Charleston. Max Alvarez coming on to the scene here to replace Mats Bierman in the 64th minute. So Mats Bierman puts in a solid shift with about 64 minutes or so. And this substitution brought to you by G&W Meats. And first substitution of the night made by Preki as two remaining. Griffith does well to keep it in. And there's Portillo. Great ball out wide. The cross in is a good one. grinno has got a tip to it, and he had to. As Skylar Thomas was looming on the back post. And Guzman just thumps it the other way, hoping for Christian Valeski, who's looking to help that along. Valeski with great hustle, as always, poking it into an area for Daniel Jackson. Trying to find Valeski, he does well to get a touch to it, but he is called for the handball. Talking about the sub that came in, Alvarez, uh, such a hard working uh, talent on the left flank. He'll be a great addition here in the remaining minutes uh, for Preki's side. Fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check uslsoccer.com for dates and times. 
Both teams still looking for a breakthrough here as we've played more than an hour at Toyota Stadium. Charleston looking to keep a seven match unbeaten streak alive. Haven't lost a game since May the 28th as there's a hard challenge from Hackshaw and the foul is called against Max Alvarez and Preki visibly has had enough. That's very frustrating. I, I'm, I'm we're surprised we're looking at each other. I don't understand that call. That's that's unfortunate for Hackshaw. He fell on uh, St. Louis's player, but uh, that was never a foul, was it? I guess mm -hmm. the referee can make the argument that Alvarez didn't make an attempt for the ball, and that's a dangerous play towards Hackshaw. Yeah. But at the same time, Hackshaw left the ground about two or three yards before the ball was even in an area for him to play, so it kind of goes to both sides. Portillo on the free kick. It's another good ball in. David gets there first. And Taylor Mueller was in an offside position, was not able to play the ball. However, it will stay with Charleston. Chang trying to slip it through. It's a great ball in. The service is a good one. But Conrad Pleva doing well to clear it. However, surrendering a corner to another dangerous set piece specialist in Justin Portillo. Key defensive work here by St. Louis, though. I mean, we noticed they've done exceptionally well tonight overall on all these set piece attacks from Charleston, who obviously practice and they're exceptional at these plays. Uh, so they need to continue this uh, path. They can obviously keep that score sheet at zero. It was Michael Chang on top of the corner kick this time as he was looking for Skylar Thomas's shot. Was scuffed a bit. It'll stay with the battery. Mark Kandlicek telling the Charleston defender to move back a couple feet. Great ball over for Thomas, trying to bring it down, but it will be offside. It was a really well-worked move from Charleston as Hackshaw was looking, or rather Thomas was looking to just cushion that header for Higashi. I've seen that a couple times in our, in our games today. Um, a couple of teams playing that long ball, short ball, and shot. So that second ball action is, is, is very popular right now with these set pieces. Adam Grinwis has done well this far, has made a couple of big saves. Two of those coming well into the first half. But has kept a clean sheet thus far. Tony Walls trying to squeeze out of some trouble, and it will be a foul committed by Neville Hackshaw. And this has really been a match that's been fought for in the middle of the park as both teams' central midfielders have done a great job of just trying to disrupt the other team's rhythm. That's why David's so important when he comes in, obviously, in the second half. And he's been a sub a couple times this season. But he makes such a difference when he comes in because he knows how to hold the ball well. That's key for a center midfielder. He knows how to distribute. He obviously plays very well defensively. He's strong. It's a good ball in from Sheldon. Nobody on the back post. Max Alvarez giving chase as he's hunted down by Quentin Griffith. Back out for duty. Been along for duty, looking for an early service. A good ball in, but Cooper off of his line and able to claim it. Still a couple subs left for, for both teams. Uh, well, just one for Preki side, but um, very important to see what decisions will be made in the last 22 minutes, 21 minutes. Um, that could be the difference maker for both these teams. Is there anything different that St. Louis can be doing when they're attacking this Charleston team? I would say uh, no. I mean, they're doing well. They're opening up well. They're obviously touching the wall uh, well in the midfield. Uh, they're keeping possession. But maybe look up for Valeski more on, on a crucial set piece or maybe potentially set him up in a good shot. Um, I think they're just finally missing that final pass into a potential goal. Another good ball in from Duty as Lasso gets there first and then Cooper. Goes Ariel to claim it. That's a good observation there, uh, Tyler, in reference to that. Um, but I'd say St. Louis has done pretty, pretty stable work tonight. They've been very, very um, focused on holding the ball, 
and being patient, which is key for Frankie's side, um, and developing play, which is ultimately what leads you to a, a goal scoring opportunity. This one clipped toward Valeski, who does extremely well to get it over to Guzman. Alvarez going out wide for duty again. He's been busy this half. Tyler David getting involved. Looking to link up with Alvarez, who gets taken down, and it will be a foul against Charleston. And another set-piece opportunity for St. Louis. They've already had a goal waved off earlier in the second half. As we'll take another look at this foul. Portillo was frustrated there. He felt he had the ball first. And uh, fortunately for his side, he, he did uh, create a, a set piece here for, for St. Louis, uh, which can be very dangerous uh, with Guzman, who's recently hot from a free kick he just scored and was taken away. Um, it's a little further out this time. It's going to be a little ambitious to get a nice shot on goal here. But um, I'm pretty sure that he's going to shoot on goal. He's going to try to attempt to, to do the same thing he just did uh, a few minutes ago. Well, there's a bit of a tougher angle and a little bit further out than the previous free kick, but either way, Guzman has been the hot foot as of late as we enter the 72nd minute. Guzman going for goal, and it's in! Octavio Guzman is denied once by the referee, but will not be denied twice. He gets a massive goal for St. Louis FC, and the St. Luligans are going nuts. It's a huge goal for the home side. They lead it 1-0. Excellent strike. You can't hold a good man down. Octavio Guzman with a superb right-footed free kick. And we were just talking how far out it is and the angle. Octavio Guzman heard us. He said, you know what? Watch this. Look at this goal. This is how I do it. Well-deserved strike here for, for St. Louis. Octavio Guzman with his second goal in as many games, scoring his first goal of the season last week in a 5-1 loss to Charlotte Independence, now putting the team on his back and looking for St. Louis FC to get all three points here against the best team in the Eastern Conference. It's a massive goal from one of their biggest leaders. And now St. Louis FC in a huge position to try to steal all three points here and maybe looking for another goal. David looking for Guzman. Frankie's recommendation at the moment is just give the ball to Octavio Guzman. The remaining, <laughs> remaining course of the game. Anywhere he is in the field, just give it to him. He's hot. He knows what to do with it. He won't lose it. He's the type of player that right now he needs to get shots on goal. And he will most likely, just from confidence and momentum, he'll potentially get another goal. Well, it had just enough power and just enough pace. The placement was obviously superb. It was right inside of the post. And you saw the hesitation from Cooper. He didn't want to dive completely across because if he does get there, he runs the risk of running into the post. It was such a well-placed free kick. Very difficult shot. Extremely, extremely difficult angle. Alvarez on the free kick. That's a spectacular ball. It's cleared away by the first defender. And now the St. Luligans in full voice here at Toyota Stadium. They love what they see from their number 17 who hails from Guadalajara. And they're on the verge of taking down the beasts of the East. Still time for Charleston to get back into it though. Plenty of space for the battery to run now. Goes out wide for Chang. Good movement here as Chang stumbled a little bit, loses the ball and St. Louis can take a deep breath and come out the other way. That's exactly what this crowd needed here at Toyota Stadium was a stellar goal like that one is the second ball hoping to fall for Sheldon. That doesn't get you hyped up. I don't know what will. <laughs> Those are the game changing moments. Now, St. Louis has 15 minutes left. They have possession on the ball. They're up 
They need to be extremely smart with their touches. They don't want to get any yellow cards. They don't want to obviously, obviously create any, any irresponsible fouls in their box and their side. They just want to hold the ball intelligently and try to continue creating chances responsibly. No call from the referee. Preki livid on the touch line, but it's not going to matter. Here comes Charleston the other way. And it will be a foul against St. Louis. And Mark Katlasek, who hasn't been popular with this crowd all game, continues to get the Boo Birds here. Garbanzo has gone down a number of times relatively easily throughout the course of this match and may have sold another one right there. Garbanzo's definitely done his job tonight, creating set pieces for Charleston, <laughs> if anything. And if you're a St. Louis supporter, you just have to hope that the spectacular prowess on the defensive end on these set pieces continues, as they really have done a good job of shutting the door, but Justin Portillo and the likes of Forrest Lasso and Skylar Thomas have rarely been held scoreless throughout the course of the season. It's another great ball in. The header is flicked on, but it's just wide. And it will be a goal kick for Adam Grinwis as it looks like we're going to have another substitution from Precky. And it looks like it's going to be Seth Rudolph who's coming on. Missed the last couple weeks due to injury. And he is going to come on and replace Daniel Jackson, who made his St. Louis FC debut tonight, putting in a solid shift of about 77 minutes and gets a nice round of applause from the St. Louis faithful here at Toyota Stadium and Seth Rudolph coming on to the scene here in the 78th minute looking to provide fresh legs and perhaps an insurance goal. And this substitution is brought to you by G&W Meats. Key substitution here. Um, uh, 20 minutes, 13 minutes remaining in the game by, by Preki. Uh, he wants to secure himself with fresh legs uh, to assist his midfield. Uh, he wants, obviously, last-minute uh, activity here from uh, Rudolph coming in, who can potentially create some chaos up front, um, obviously assisting midfielders. So it's going to be very important with their touches and obviously their possession here in the last 13 minutes. Here's Valeski with a nice turn. Going out wide for Sheldon. Sheldon with a fake, gets it into the area, but Cooper claims it. Looking for an option in transition, can't find one, and will slow things down for Charleston. 12 and change to hang on for St. Louis FC. As that is an absolute bomb the other way, probably a net of about 80 yards. St. Louis able to deal with it nicely. And looking at the stats, possession hasn't changed at all in this game. Uh, it's been an equal 60-40 throughout the entire uh, match uh, in favor of St. Louis. Rudolph looking for goal there, and Cooper makes an easy save. So we have to make sure that the last uh, you know, 12 minutes left, they obviously make emphasis on possession. They always continue holding the ball. You know, They're running the clock now. Obviously, hopefully, no, in no serious injuries, but they're going to be smart with their plays, um, and they'll continue to do so for the remainder of the game. Looks like it's Matt Sheldon who's down on this near side. Saving from some attention from the St. Louis FC physio as Preki gets an opportunity to talk with some of his attacking front players. And a good opportunity for the St. Louis team able to catch one more breather, a little bit of a rinse before closing this one out. And what a huge three points it would be not being in the win column since June 2nd, when against Toronto FC2, which saw AJ Cochran and Christian Valeski the goal scorers. It's Octavio Guzman tonight who gets that honor, scoring from a free kick from about 26, 27 yards away. And now we'll have to see if Matt Sheldon is able to continue for the remaining 10 minutes or so. And 
we will resume play here at Toyota Stadium. Valeski challenging the header. And the foul is called on the Nevada native. And it looks like there's going to be another substitution. And it is going to be Nick Rittmeyer who comes on. Rittmeyer is going to provide some flank work here. Uh, some fresh legs out wide, potentially get some crosses in and, and create uh, disruption here for St. Louis's back line in the last uh, few minutes of the game. Seth Rudolph trying to hang on to the ball, but he's dispossessed. Guzman almost won it back now. Here's Rittmeyer getting his first touch and is able to win a corner for Charleston. As Justin Portillo trotting over to the near left corner. And that'll send Forrest Lasso and Taylor Mueller like into the box. And another opportunity for Charleston to try to level this game from the corners. St. Louis have been sensational defending these corners all night. Grinwas punches it out. But Higashi does a great job to keep the ball in St. Louis's territory. Grinwas off of his line again, fumbles it initially, but this time able to collect it. And he's going to take his time, as I'm sure we're going to see St. Louis be very patient and take their sweet time in terms of restarts and getting the ball back in play. Yeah, at this point, they definitely did do that. I mean, as you see, Greenwood did a great job here of, of denying uh, Lasso, who'd run up as an attacker at that point um, to get his head on the ball there. Um, so now they have to really hold the ball, keep possession, um, run the clock down, and just obviously be smart with their, with their fouls. Nice little one-touch football here from St. Louis. Griffith brings it down nicely. Walls does a good job to break it up. And Forrest Lasso dumps it the other way. Rittmeyer trying to keep it in play. Here's Michael Chang in plenty of space. Chang trying to bend it around the defenders. Pleva does well. But it will be another corner to Charleston. Corner number continues to rise for Charleston. They have not been able to cash in just yet. St. Louis trying to hold on. It's another good ball in. Grinwis comes again with strong fist. And there's an unleashed shot from Hackshaw. That goes wide and a bit high. He hit it pretty sweetly, but just didn't necessarily have the placement. This is the point where Charleston obviously comes in and has a bit of uh, desperation to capitalize on any chance they have. Um, Hackshaw had an opportunity. He, he swung his leg. And it was a great, great shot, great attempt. Um, but they really have very few attempts left um, to really make a difference in this game. Another foul committed by St. Louis in the middle of the park. This time it's Walls who's the culprit. And Portillo sends it out wide. But the ball was moving while he was playing it, so they'll have to bring it all the way back, and it'll allow St. Louis to get back and get their defensive shape. It's Quentin Griffith. Hasn't gotten all that involved in the offensive attack. His shot is blocked. Now it's back out for Hackshaw, finding Higashi. Higashi going for goal, and there's a great block in front from Pleva, and it had to be, as Higashi had a beat on goal. Yeah, to give it to Charleston, though, they're very relentless. They always, they always persist, and they want to keep creating opportunities. And St. Louis, you got to applaud their night. They've been very defensive. They've done well. They've scored their goal, and now they're playing smart in the back. This is now the 10th corner of the night for the battery. Portillo on it once again. The 
This time it's towards the back post. Mueller tried to get there, but it's Valesky who comes away with it and thumps it the other way. Fans, after the final whistle, head over to twitter.com slash STLFC to vote for your pleats man of the match. Sheldon wins the ball back for St. Louis FC. And it'll go all the way over for Patrick Duty, who has really shined in his St. Louis FC debut here. Good ball along for Valeski. Valeski chopping it back. It's a great ball in. He's taken the ground. No call from the referee and will play on. And OB Woodbine getting set to come on. He'll replace Skylar Thomas, so a big offensive for defensive switch there by Mike Anhauser as he's trying to somehow eke out a point here at Toyota Stadium. St. Louis have done everything to earn all three points, but sometimes the fickle game of football can play all sorts of games with you. And right now, the Charleston Battery are looking to maybe find a cheap one and come out of Toyota Stadium with a point. Lasso getting to the ball first, but it's easy work for Grinwis as he falls on top of it as precious seconds continue to dwindle down. Incredible night for Grinwis. He's done really well. He's been very secure in the back. Very confident. I mean, he hasn't fumbled the ball. He's obviously very been very, very important in the back line here for St. Louis. Lasso has his clearance deflected by Valeski, so it stays in Charlotte's end, or Charleston's end, rather. Just give it to Guzman. Valeski looking for an option, finding Rudolph. Rudolph had one thought on his mind, goal, but rather it goes back out to Guzman. And this is smart play from St. Louis, not allowing Charleston to get the ball back, hanging on to it, and not giving the battery an opportunity. Oh, that's a bad giveaway from Playva. Things could be on here for Charleston. It's sent into the area, and it's just out of the reach of Hackshaw. Higashi going for it. Grinwis off of his line, and he makes the save, however, conceding the 11th corner of the night. It was a nervy moment after Conrad Playva got it all wrong. Difficult play here from St. Louis, but Grinwis stood up. Obviously, he capitalized on his offensive proudness. He made sure that he didn't let anything go by, but it was a very, very scary moment here for St. Louis um, in the last few minutes. Corner squandered by Charleston as Max Alvarez is on the ground and hurt. see there, Charleston has not got a game without scoring yet this season. That might come to an end tonight. Take another look at exactly what happened, and there you can see Griffith and Alvarez going up for it. Yeah, you don't it, seem to think there's anything in it. No, I mean, that was a pretty innocent play there. I think they both went in for the header and they just collided. And it ends up being Tyler David who gets the yellow card. As he may have been involved in some extracurriculars after the whistle had already been blown. Into the 90th minute now, we've had plenty of stoppages here in the second half, so you have to imagine that there's going to be at least three or four minutes of stoppage time. And it is going to be four minutes of added time.
stoppage time brought to you by Hot Shots. Be sure to visit one of the 12 local Hot Shots' locations after the match. So four precious minutes to hold on for St. Louis FC. What a big three points it would be to steal it away from the top dogs of the Eastern Conference. Well-deserved tonight. I mean, absolutely well-deserved for St. Louis. They've outplayed Charleston. I mean, they've been holding the ball well. They've created opportunities. Uh, now they just have to run down the clock. I mean, at this point, they have to make sure that every single touch is sharp, every single touch is out in the flank if they don't have an opportunity. Uh, play it safe, don't get any yellow cards. Mr. Guzman here will obviously take the free kick and he'll make sure he'll put it in the corner. Just clips it into an area for Rudolph to run into, but surrenders it right back to the battery. And the ball boys here at Toyota Stadium not exactly doing Cooper any favors. <laughs> They've been taught well. <laughs> Whatever it takes, I guess, at Fenton, Missouri. <laughs> Guzman again just clipping it into the corner for this possible area away from his own goal. St. Louis were asking for the ball to be called out of bounds. However, it stays in play. Good challenge from Pleva as Mike Anhauser now off of his seat and his team is in danger of not scoring in the first game of their 2017 campaign. And that's a ridiculous statistic that at some point had to come to an end and it might in about two minutes. Substitute Obi Woodbine provides some sort of spark for this Charleston team. The flick from Chang finds nobody in a white jersey. And St. Louis sends it down towards the other end. Christian Valeski with a never ending motor giving chase here. And Cooper clears it away with Valeski right on the doorstep. Guzman bringing it down, but he is called for the handball. He attempted the chest handball trap. And now Forrest Lasso giving a two arm shiver to Octavio Guzman as Precky continues to argue on the sideline. Portillo wants everyone in the box. Portillo clips it in. Higashi waiting for it. He gets a header to it. Or rather, that was Obi Woodbine who got ahead to it. Higashi was waiting for it to come down. Back out for Griffith. Griffith with a good ball in. Sheldon gets there first. And Rudolph clears it away. About 30 seconds now for St. Louis FC. These are the key moments. These are the, uh, the times that they need to be very, very intelligent with their ball, with their hold. Everything needs to be done right. No reckless tackles, no unnecessary yellow cards. Well, it's going to be an illegal throw on Obi Woodbine. Referee claiming that he brought his leg up before the ball left his hands, and that might just do it here from Toyota Stadium. St. Louis fans can start to smell it, as well as Precky. Octavio Guzman's goal around the 70-minute marker. Proves to be the difference between these two Eastern Conference sides. And that's going to do it. St. Louis FC still three points away from the top dogs of the Eastern Conference. And for the first time this season, the Charleston Battery failed to score in a USL match. You can see the big sigh of relief from Precky. It certainly wasn't pretty by any means, but they get the job done. They get their first three points since June the 2nd, and it's a massive three points at that. Albert Munoz, your thoughts? Oh, yeah, an exceptional play for St. Louis. I mean, incredible night. They, they're going to be exhilarated. They're the crowd, their home crowd here supporting them, obviously coming through with a spectacular goal by, um, by Guzman. So what can I say? Ex excellent job by St. Louis. Octavio Guzman scoring his second goal in as many games as he and the St. Louis FC club take down Charleston Battery. We'll be back in just a few moments with full-time stats and highlights.
full time here at Toyota Stadium in St. Louis FC comes away with a huge, an enormous three points. Octavio Guzman, the goal scorer, Precky, all smiles here. We'll be back in just a moment with full time stats and highlights. Full time here in Fenton, Missouri. St. Louis FC coming away with an enormous three points. The final score at Toyota Stadium. St. Louis FC won. Charleston battery nil. Tyler Terrence along with Albert Munoz. And what a spectacular 90 minutes it had. Certainly it's droning moments, but at the end of the day, Octavio Guzman ended up scoring from two free kicks. Only one of them ended up counting. That was in the 72nd minute. And Albert, what a fantastic night it was at Toyota Stadium. We'll take a look at some of the highlights from the match and right off the bat St. Louis came out flying but they weren't uh, they weren't given the goal initially they had a tough time finding the back of the net but they worked extremely hard in the opening moments yeah I couldn't agree with you more I mean they had a great possession game today um, Octavio Guzman who's our player to watch he ignited the, the attack early on I mean he had a lot of defensive work here because we had Charleston who was attacking right off the bat he had a lot of chances um, all, all, all the while, always playing defensively, intelligent, and always making sure that they were always holding back because Charleston was attacking. They were obviously creating plays. Um, they had shots after shots. Green Wiss was my man of the match here for, for our defensive side. He was exceptional. We had free kicks. Obviously, Tommy Guzman, like I mentioned, scored a beautiful free kick that was taken away, uh, unfortunately, because of a foul against them. But he wasn't done tonight. He kept persisting because that's the type of player that he is. But what a magnificent attempt here with a free kick, right, Tyler? Absolutely. As you can see, the frustration there from Christian Valeski as well as the other St. Louis players when the goal was waved off. Grin was making another save there on Portillo, but this was the deciding moment as Octavio Guzman squeezing it inside the near post and beating Odesno Cooper. What an unexpected free kick. We were even talking about how oh, it's a bit too far, the angle's difficult. No one expected the shot, but Guzman came through with a beautiful free kick, which was essentially the difference maker for tonight. Octavio Guzman with his second goal in two games, getting his first goal of the season a week ago. And this is almost a scary moment here for St. Louis as Cordoza, uh, Cordovez, excuse me, almost was able to get there. Hagashi ended up getting denied by Grin was right at the last. We'll take a look at from our, some of our final match stats. St. Louis, as they always do, dominate the possession category, and they dominate that top stat, one to nil, a huge three points. Yeah, I mean, possession was there the entire game. Uh, very well played for them. They held the ball well, a lot of shots. Uh, both teams, they fought. It was a great match overall, but St. Louis came on top. They scored a beautiful free kick, um, and what's ultimately what's what made the difference tonight. St. Louis with their first win since June 2nd. Charleston Battery's seven-match unbeaten streak is snapped. Their first loss since May the 28th and the first game this season where they fail to score a goal. So a lot of firsts here tonight for St. Louis and Precky's side as Patrick Duty along with Daniel Jackson getting their debut, getting three points in their debut, and it could not have come at a better time for St. Louis FC team that was starving for three points. They came out here and they feasted on this Charleston team. The final score from Toyota Stadium, 
is one to nil in favor of St. Louis FC. We had a fantastic time tonight. We hope you did as well. For my producer, Brian Duvall, our director, Eddie Suarez, and our replay operator, Brad Canfield, and my broadcast partner, Albert Munoz. I'm Tyler Terrence saying so long for now with a final score from Toyota Stadium, St. Louis 1, Charleston 0. Thanks for stopping by, folks. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent from the United Soccer League.